You're listening to the Nerd to Know Media Network. Join us at nerdtoknowmedia.com. All right, so you're wondering, how do I listen to you guys live? How do I check it out? Well, good news. We stream every Wednesday, 9 p.m. over on Twitch. Nerddux, N-E-R-D-D-U-X, or Nerd to Know Media on YouTube or Twitch. That's how you're going to be able to catch us. Hope to see you in the live chat. Broadcasting from the Blanchestan Center, this is Phoenix FM. The internet is a communications tool used the world over where people can come together to bitch about movies and share pornography with one another. According to the Nerd Index, you should be upside down in a junior high toilet around the clock. This is Sparta! <laughs> All your base are belong to us. The balls are inert. And now it begins. Hey everybody, welcome to uh, Nerd to Know Media here on Phoenix 92.5 FM. Thank you very much for joining us again. We're going to try this again because Manute got us. So uh, yeah, we're just going to jump right into it. Um, guys, we're going to talk about some news, some big news, and then kind of make our way back to Simpsons Season 8. So that's the show, the rough show plan. But um, news of the week, I suppose, is that Bethesda has been yeah. sold to Microsoft. What do we think? Well, it's Zenimax, the, yeah, the, parent, the, parent, com- company. the parent company for Bethesda and its software and Arcane Studios has been sold to Microsoft. So it's very likely that all our RPGs are belong to Microsoft very soon. Um, it's huge news. I, it, it, I mean, it raises like I mean, there's so many different kinds of questions that have uh, that have come out of this since uh, the week, since the since news broke on Monday, and it, <laughs> I find it I find it hard to know where to start because there's just so many questions. It's it's absolutely it's just a colossal event like. Yeah. There's just so many facets and that, so many possible outcomes. I will say, like, obviously the idea of, uh, like, few IPs hoarding massive amounts of acquisitions, the di- pulling a Disney mm. is kind of, like, is tends to be a kind of a bad idea. But I do think Bethesda was kind of overdue some major yeah, change. The, the- they were they were going to implode on themselves if this was happened. a this was something that was on the cards yeah. for a while and not in, so much in terms of like specifically Microsoft purchasing them, but mm. like to your what you were saying like this was something that was on the on the cards for a while because they had been making some very questionable decisions in ha- in terms of how they were in terms of like the the quality of output that had co- that had been released with games like the it's very the, the very fallout scatter, 76 very scatter, was uh, yeah like mm. se- fallout 76 like was the most there, you know <laughs> like yeah like the, the the most polished things that bethesda as a production company was putting out was from their more specific uh, like developed studios like in like in yeah, arcane absolutely yeah. you know i mean like the dishonored series has been massively successful um and then it's been ab- like i mean it has been absolutely killing it hmm. um, Deathloop, like is their next big one and that's yeah pre-reviews for that have been solid that looks really good so like arcane looks to be doing good doom eternals mm. incredible mm. so that's it on like you know on the level so yeah. just Bethesda as a studio, we're really just kind of the lame horse there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, and, I, think, I think anything that's Skyrim and Fallout related is like the problem. You know? Yeah, well, I, I, it I was think... like, you know, you have Doom, you have Prey, Doom Eternal. Fire. Main news did didn't get him. Okay, yeah. no, I think you're. I think you're there. I you think seem I'm, solid. I think, yeah, it seems solid. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's it's like that's kind of the problem. It's like a tale of two cities, right? Where it's like you have these great 
your hand, you just don't, you know. Mm. Like, I, I, I think it's, um, I mean, one of the things that I find really interesting about it is that, like, I've seen people, I see people go, like, this really strengthens Game Pass now on Xbox. Um, and, like, as well, as well as that, like, there's been, there's been a lot of speculation about, well, is the next Elder Scrolls going to be an Xbox exclusive? Um, which, I, in my opinion, I think that, like, if they'd be leaving more money on the table than they would be taking off the table if they made it ex- exclusive. I think that, like, if they actually did, if they made it available so that it wouldn't just be on PC and on Xbox, that it was also available on PS4, they would actually make a lot more. They'd stand to make a lot more from it than they would if they just said, no, 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 you have to get the Xbox. Because you're basically saying, yeah, you need an extra 300 quid well, that's on top kind of, of the game. But that's kind of been Mark, uh, Microsoft's like strategy the past few mm. years coming into the, the Series X is even if it's a Xbox exclusive, yeah. it's a PC game as well. Yeah. So it's it's only semi exclusive. Like it's more, it, it's it's more. I was about to say it's more exclusive, but th- that's exactly what it means. It's yeah. literally just cutting PlayStation out of the equation. Yeah, and, and like, to a certain extent, Switch too. Yeah, well, they, they're playing their own ball game. Yeah, they're running their own. But, but like, mm. yeah, like it'd be a big move to have Elder Scrolls 6 theoretically be a tentpole Xbox yeah. title. Now, I think like if my my prediction is that they'd probably do it as a timed exclusive. I yeah. even though they're now owned by Microsoft, I just don't see Bethesda holding that yeah. that close to the chest and knowing how successful Skyrim was cross platform. Yeah. One of, one of the things that I, I, I talked about this uh, with um, one of my friends earlier earlier in the week as well was that like like so many have come out have come out flat out now and said that games are going to be seventy dollars uh, $70 plus and I think that actually creates a really interesting scenario for Xbox because they could easily just go okay well our exclusive games are now all like our um, uh, games we make in house are all going to be fifty dollars. So it's like, yeah, you can get like the next Elder Scrolls on PlayStation, but it'll cost you more. That's that's even excluding Game Pass. Yeah, that's like the, that's that's the um, the Steam model, basically. Yeah, basically. Yeah, and, would, and I like, think it's, would... it's an interesting though. Like, you know, you could have people going to PlayStation for because again, like PlayStation, it's uh, it's it's trump cards are its exclusives. That's kind of PlayStation yeah. Holdic have been just like. Acquiring this, this is ours. We're not. It might come to PC in five years, and that's the best you're getting. Yeah. So, like, you like it'll kind of push people to if they are getting a PlayStation, they're probably only ever going to use the PlayStation yeah. for the five odd exclusives that come out yeah. in a year. Like, because I like, I'm not going to spend seventy quid every mm, month. No, mm. like, the only way you can play um, Sony games on PC is if you use PlayStation Now. Um, and stream it to your place to your computer, and that's it. And even then, you're still. I think a lot of like uh, landmark PS4 games aren't even on that yet, as far as I know. Yeah, yeah, like they're still holding off on them. Um, I'd say they, that'll probably something will come more in line for PS5. Oh yeah, um, but again, like it'll be very much like you know how long are we at? Like how long are we past from the release of Bloodborne? Like that's four yeah. years. So like, and that's still nowhere near even PlayStation now coming. No. The idea of that coming to a PC. Yeah. So like it, that's kind of that seems to be the kind of the limits of which they are willing to withhold this yeah. until it is completely just lost its actual value, its intrinsic value. Mm. Which I mean, that could go to the point where it almost becomes like it might even just they might even just go well, let's just make this abandonware by the time that they could, you know, by the time like by the time because by that time there might just be absolutely no interest in the game by the time that it loses any intrinsic value. Find it. Yeah. You know. Um, like one of the other things that I've seen as well is that like there's been so much chatter about Fallout New Vegas again. Yeah, because it's, oh, really? it's, it's is it Zenimax owns Obsidian. No, yeah. Microsoft owned uh, owned Obsidian prior to this purchase, yeah. and oh, then wow. yeah, oh, that was um, it. I did hear that. Yeah, and so basically you would have a thing where Bethesda and Obsidian are sister companies technically. So Microsoft could basically go, yeah, Obsidian, you've got. Like you've got the quote-unquote license 
to make this uh, Fallout to make a Fallout game now. Hey, um, you've got you've got the cloud from the outer worlds. Here's yeah. here's your IP back. <laughs> yeah, it's like no, here's your crown, your Majesty. <laughs> like, <laughs> now go save the series. <laughs> yeah, basically, you know. Um, That's the other thing. They could like they could shuffle studios. They, they, they have that power now where they could yeah. shuffle Obsidian staff just into the, Bethes- the Bethesda software studio mm. and be like, you've been screwing around with this series. Like, mm. Outer Worlds is great, but Outer Worlds isn't a brand. Fallout's a brand. Make Fallout good again. <laughs> yeah, basically. Like, you know... Well, here's, um... here's, well, here's the thing. You know, I was, I was looking into this and there was a very good point that was made. The amount... Everybody is looking at seems to think that the xbox or sony and microsoft are compatible they're not really you know microsoft are this huge massive corporation with a game in division and sony are sony you know so they're like, just one of the biggest electronics conglomerates on the planet but yeah sure they're just sony correct Correct, but they're not Microsoft. Yeah, you but know, they're like, still one of the biggest companies in the world. They're like, still, they've but, still like it's it's like the PlayStation has managed to separate it as a brand from but Sony. Here, but here's the thing, right? Um, the this was bought with the petty cash of Microsoft, and Microsoft could do this deal a hundred times over probably, yeah. without. No, not probably. This it's it's in the mat about a hundred times over without even breaking into their petty cash. So, yeah, while I accept that Sony are huge, it really is kind of like, well, why didn't Microsoft think about this sooner? You know, <laughs> they could have just mm. killed a competition like this years ago, but it just shows you how much the PlayStation 4 actually hurt Microsoft this mm. generation. Like, they Absolutely. really hurt them. You know, that's what this screams to me. It's like, oh, wow, okay. You know, fair enough, the Xbox 360, you know, they won that easily. PlayStation 2, they're only just getting into the market. Now this time around, they're like, right, we really screwed up. Let's let's start hurting Sony, uh, hurting Sony. And they've done it. This like a lot of people now, like I wasn't I as I said like last week, I have no real interest in next generation consoles yet. But yeah. I would probably now go towards uh Xbox. No. But I mean I like, think, I've, you know, I've always been honestly. a PlayStation person. Always. And th- like this news is like the first time where I went like God, this really has like raised the question. <laughs> like know. it's, I I think I mentioned this before. This news came out specifically when we were talking mm-hmm. about the consoles last week. Where I know I'm like I know I'm going to get a PS5, but I'm not going to get one anytime soon. Yeah, but I'm highly considering it within some time, probably the next year, getting one of the Series S's, the small ones. Mm. because 300 is not that bad and no. the idea of game pass is really really handy so yeah. like again kind of going back to the what i said about 70 quid games you know i'd have a ps5 and i'd buy that for playstation exclusives mm. but the third party games i could probably just get on game pass more often than not and now that again you'd have the likes of bethesda and oh <laughs> any number of the studios xbox and bot yeah. the fact that they are third party studios that are going to be on game pass day one that's a good selling point. Yeah, absolutely. Like, it, I was looking through, like, uh, all the different game subsidiaries they have now, and I was just like, oh, man, this screams of EA in the early 2000s. <laughs> you know, where it's just, like, this giant conglomerate taking a ton of studios. Let's and, just like, hope they don't bleed and well, look, I mean, early destroy two, them. <laughs> early 2000s EA was a wonderful time for games. Late 2000s EA was less of a good time for games. <laughs> Those companies don't exist anymore. <laughs> no, no. R.I.P. Westwood. R.I.P. Um, Neversoft. Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, Neversoft. Neversoft are great. That's one thing, actually, that I've noticed from playing the, the new Tony Hawk game. I really miss Neversoft. Yeah. But, I'm, I'm actually looking forward to getting those Tony, that, that Tony Hawk uh, remake. The same thing has happened... Uh, the same thing that's ha- has ha- happened with Crash Bandicoot remake is happening with me now playing it. I'm mm. so used to playing the originals that I can't get over the new graphics. <laughs> yeah, it looks fair. too good. Yeah, it's just no, it's too know, clean and too crisp. Well, the, the, hit protection, the hit protection is off for me. Yeah. So it's like the hitbox is a little bit too crisp, and I'm like, oh no. 
<laughs> uh, I feel like it's great and I'm like yeah it is but it's also not and people are like you're crazy I'm like no listen I still play Tony Hawk's 2 the OG one on yeah. the, the, play, the play on the PSP and the Vita so like I'm used to just playing them all the time so when I boot that up I was like I prefer the older one and the same thing happened with Crash Bandicoot where it's just like yeah I hate these new ones I'd much rather just play the old one and I don't understand why it's weird Mm. Well, I, I think it's also just because you're so, like, I mean, you have, you have to remember that, like, between between uh, this Tony Hawk game, and uh, b- between this Tony Hawk game and Tony Hawk's two, is in and around twenty years difference. Yeah. So there's a lot. There's a lot that's happened techno- technologically in gaming in that time that's going to ha- cause like there to be a bit of like a a split and if you're used to a certain if you're used to like a slower frame rate and you're used to you know having a bit more of a forgiveness in how things hit it's going to affect how you play absolutely is I'm, I'm not going to say know? that it's a bad game because the remake actually is phenomenal like it's so yeah. fluid it's crisp it's lovely it's it's pretty much what you think it is but it's also like just different enough for it to be yeah. noticeable. Well, no, not, not even that. It's like, because when you play Tony Hawk's Pro Skaters, like Underground or something like that, you know? Like, mm. I love Tony Hawk's, I love Tug's game, so I think they're great. Tug, Tug is too, is great. Where you can actually take off the skateboard and walk around and do tricks that mm. way. I wish you had have added that in. Yeah, um, um, they were, apparently they, uh, they didn't want to add it in because they felt like it was a redundant... Uh, feature in the game, even though I felt like it was actually a nice thing to add in because it meant that you could set things up properly. Yeah, that's why I like it too. It's more yeah. real life, it's more realistic. Um, but look, it is what it is. You know, everyone who I've talked to has loved it, and I totally get why. Mm. But I'm also like, I'm good with my PlayStation yeah. copies. PlayStation, but yeah. that's, I mean, that's going to happen too. Is that like, you know, there's always going to be, you know, for every, like, uh, for every kind of like a change or change you see in a remake, there's always going to be something where you're going to be like, well, I don't really care for that. Yeah. You know, no, and like that's always going to be, you know, that's always the way things are going to go. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, I mean, when it, came, when it comes to the, um, I'll, I'll never forget playing the new, the remake of Crash Bandicoot and going uh, and uh, playing right. certain levels and going, yeah. oh, they've actually added in other things to these hitboxes so that like you think you've actually like your uh, things where like you're, you're trying to jump across the platform and they've smoothed out edges whereas yeah. they would have been sharper edges before so you would have just landed and you go oh no it's not forgiving anymore and you just slide off yeah that's, and, that's why i hate that's why i hate it i'm like yeah. i hate this yeah i hate this because it's like i know you're it's more muscle memory at that point where you're like i've been playing this game for 20 yeah. years um and then you go back and play and you're like okay you change so much of it now. It's a different game. You know, it's. I understand there is that kind of preservation and updating as well. But it's just like, yeah. for example, you play the weird one is Doom. If you play Doom and mm. you have ports of it, some are worse than others. But the most generic one that came out there for the PS4, that's actually Doom One and Two is built on the Unity engine. They're actually yeah. Unity ports, which is, you know, really good. Mm. Um, you can't really tell the difference. It's almost spot for spot, same game. Mm. You know, so it can be done, but I think these guys are just getting to um they want to put their own stamp on it. And I would be like, Yeah, maybe don't. Mm. Maybe don't. Well, you know, I mean when it comes to um <laughs> like when I first saw that there was gonna be that Tony Hawk uh, game coming out, I, uh, the first thing that went through my head was if you can't unlock Spider Man, I don't see the point. <laughs> Same, you know. Same. It's like Spider Man is the whole reason why you get the game. But yeah. I don't think you can. Spider Man and CKY. <laughs> yes. 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 Actually, the, sound, the soundtrack is still pretty good. And they've added a bunch but it's, of it's, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's mostly, yeah, no, I heard they got like most of the original soundtrack. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Because you uh, have to. Uh, it's just, it's like essential. The, the, you know? the soundtrack was like as e- iconic as the game was. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. Like, I mean, it's how it, I got, it's how I found out about the offspring. Like, it's, yeah. I think it's how most people found out about the offspring. <laughs> Yeah, like I mean, it's that's a fair point. Yeah, it, I, I, <laughs> I, 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 I'm like, wait, okay, that's a fair point. Yeah. 
Yeah, either that or when Pretty Fly for a White Guy was number one in the in the pop charts. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm actually going to do some Googling now. Can you unlock Spider-Man and, to- yeah, and Tony? Yeah, I, 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 I think I heard your dad. I think I, I think I heard that that was, yeah, that was, they got that. Yeah, it's always good. been unlocked. Okay. It's Spider-Man and Tony Yeah, Okay. Can you unlock? Or... <laughs> it doesn't say. It doesn't, it doesn't say. say. Yeah. Let us know in the comments I'm, I'm below. sure you can make them if you were that desperate. It's not though. the same. It's not it the same. Either. It's not the same. It needs to be there. It needs if, to be made for me. <laughs> yeah. If not, if not, I'm going to uh, write your very strongly worded tweet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not really. I'm not yeah. Really. Yeah, I don't think you can, man. That's a bummer. Yeah. yeah. What's the point? This whole thing was a waste. <laughs> this whole thing was a waste because of an unlockable character. <laughs> you know Rolled my cartridge out the window. <laughs> you know what they should do? They should actually remake those Spider-Man games because they're great. Instead of wasting money on Miles Morales, the oh on the um, the PS One ones. Yeah, yeah, they were great. Oh no, they were great. They were super. They are great. great. I think that they will suffer from the same crack band you can think. There's no way they will feel the same. And they that's absolutely the will. Like, oh, they will. But then I will have to deal with Miles Morales, and I hate Miles Morales, so it's like that's fine. Like everyone's did, favorite. Hey, Dara, what did Miles Morales say about Star Wars? <laughs> <laughs> I just don't like him. I find him to be like the worst part of everything he's in. It's like I liked the Ultimate Universe. I didn't like Miles Morales. I lo- I loved Into the Spider Verse. I wanted Miles Morales to die every time I see him on the screen. He was okay in, this, in the PlayStation 4 game, but then he kept showing up, and it's like, please go away. You know, it, it's just like, yeah, don't like him. Give me Miguel O'Hara any day. We yeah, want you know, Miguel. Miguel we is in the future. Miguel. So, hey, look, you, you had a chance to vote with your wallet, and you didn't, because no one bought that, that sequel to... Oh, you did. <laughs> I did. I bought all those games, and yeah. they were terrible. <laughs> and I played them and made and made myself like them. So no, I did. I did vote my wallet. No one else did because mm. everyone is futurist. Well, then you no got outvoted. Like, yeah, I guess so. Maybe because the games were terrible. Yeah, because the games bu- were terrible. Don't buy the Miles Morales game, guys. We're gonna start that campaign every week. Don't buy Edge of Time them. instead. Buy Edge of Time instead. Yes, remake that. Buy Shattered Dimensions and Edge of Time Hold on. instead. Ed- Shattered Dimensions is a great game. Hey. That is a great game. I'm not saying it's not. All I'm saying is you should be buying it instead. I it think, has problems yeah. and it tries very hard. You know, it tries its best. It's Arkham Asylum it's ripoff fair. is very fun. I don't know, man. <laughs> I, look, I, I will. I, I love that game. I'm just going to say, I, you know, you get four Spider Men, you get For the, the, the old. Man, who's got them? <laughs> <laughs> he's gotten so livid oh he's back <laughs> I'm back I'm back don't worry my new team didn't, didn't get me this time um, uh, yeah, four Spider-Man wait. for the price of one yeah. seriously boycott boycott um, the Spider-Man Mods Morales game mm. buy Edge of Time instead make yeah. it happen I was right about Sting wasn't I Bryn you, but you predicted it Every year, yeah, like and then it happened. clockwork, and then it happened. I'm yeah, but you say. got it wrong more times than you got it right. You got it you right. Have, once. You only have to be right once. You only have to be right once. <laughs> oh, you're the you're the kind of person that when someone says like a broken clock was right twice a day, you're the person who goes, "Well, that's better than none." <laughs> <laughs> exactly. There you go. You know, it is what it is. It, I, any win is a win, and that's the important thing. <laughs> right. <God's> sake. Um. <laughs> So yeah, one well, of the other things that came out this week was that uh, Tom Hardy was uh, named as the replacement for Daniel Craig in uh, uh, future James Bond movies. Um, anyone have any thoughts on uh, either on the uh, Daniel Craig's um, run ending or on Tom Hardy coming in? I just I have no feelings towards James Bond at this point. I just. I have no interest anymore. And I don't, I just, I'm getting the feeling that's kind of the general consensus now. Am I wrong? Or have um, I just, have I just stopped I, caring? I, I've, I've grown up around James Bond, man. So I just, like, I just kind of go, oh, cool. At this point, like it's, I'll watch I, them. 
I see. I, I, I loved them when I was a kid. I like even you know I liked the Pierce Brosnan ones, even though they were campy and kind of terrible. I still liked them. A, a lot of them are campy and kind of terrible. Oh, but, but like, you know, the Brosnan ones are campy and actually terrible, not yeah, terrible. The, the, the Timothy right. Dalton ones are also campy and kind of terrible. Yeah, that's fair. You know, like. <laughs> To be fair, I thought that, I thought that was the point. Like I thought they were. That's kind of. I, I, I think that's kind of what. That's almost yeah. what the Craig ones are missing. Well, it's, it's just like the Craig ones were like, so that, you know, when when Casino Royale came out, a lot of the major com- complaints people had was that like, you could just see the beats coming from a mile off on James Bond movies, and it had gotten kind of hackneyed and a bit trite. So then it came along. So Craig comes along, and it's very serious, and it's very gritty, and there's parkour, and you know <laughs> parkour. Yeah, and, you know, and, and like I mean, it was. I mean, like Chris Hero Royale was a breath of fresh air to yeah. the overall franchise of James Bond films. Um, but I mean, like now with the whole run gone through, we could go. Well, there was four films with him in it, and two of them were very, very good. And two of them weren't. So it kind of... And, I, and you know what? Just, I, I, I will have to say, I'm so sick of seeing the ad for this new one. I'm like, can yeah. we just show it? Yeah. I don't... You, I don't just really, just I, release it and let it flop already it. at this point. Mm. Like, uh, I'm so sick of it now at this point because I've, been, I've seen the ad for about 10 months. And yeah. it's like, listen, I wasn't going to see it the first time. I'm now actively going to campaign against it. <laughs> And uh, yeah, yeah. Like as as no, much no, of the no. breath of fresh air Casino Royale was back in two thousand nine. Yeah. Like, like as much as that was breath of fresh air, then that really just kind of rolled into the heap of gritty yep. like reboots and remakes. The the dark nighting, as you could yeah. probably consider it, and now it just feels homogenous. I, like the whole fr- like the franchise, the Craig Bond just feels homogenous in a way that feels outdated five years ago. Yeah, absolutely. That needs no, something of a rebranding. And if Hardy, I think what I'm saying is if Hardy's Batman, or Batman, if Hardy's uh, James Bond is just Venom, I'll watch it. Yeah. Hey, but that look, could happen. You know, you it's, know, it's, it's, I, I would also happily watch it if it was uh, Tom Hardy earnestly doing his Bane voice. I think that was shake and not stirred. <laughs> you know? I, <laughs> I don't know. I, I think Tom Hardy think... gets. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just. I just. I said that, and immediately was like, "That's halfway between Bane and Sean Connery." <laughs> yeah, but that, that's what happens. You know, um, it can Sorry, also Darren, go, go between Bane and uh, Patrick Stewart. Uh, <laughs> I I just think uh, Tom Hardy has a lot more range. That it's just. You know, we're only starting to see now. Like, I, mm. I watched uh, Inception recently, and I loved Inception. Like, always have. But he's like the best part of it. Oh yeah, totally. He's honestly like the best part of the movie, and um, it's just you get to see him play complete. I think a lot of the roles he's been in recently haven't really given him that ability to really kind of um, embrace. You know, the more kind of flamboyant side of him, I guess. Um, he's he's always had projects though here and there where he has like uh, oh, Bronson yeah, sure. obviously Bronson, Bronson is God bless so Bronson good. Um, yeah. and uh, did you he's watch the... the Revenant? Like he's so did... different to anything else in the Revenant as well. Like did you watch that uh, Cray Twins movie he was in? Oh yeah, yeah, like, so I good. I really that. couldn't care less about the Cray Twins story, but mm. him playing twins is absolutely what got me mm. into that movie. Yeah, he's brilliant. Man. Like, like he, he is, he's a, he is a really, really talented actor, mm. and I think, I think on some level, him playing James Bond is kind of like, it's kind of disappointing because he can do so much more than be James Bond. A part of me would have always said, like, a part of me will always say that, like, Idris Elba would be much more interesting as James Bond just because it is something that they would have to treat so differently. It's a hundred, and it's a hundred percent like in his wheelhouse. Oh, totally, yeah. Whereas I feel like, bo- like the concept of Bond will be holding mm. Tom Hardy back. Yeah, well, and again, like I mean, Idris is a very versatile actor too. But oh, yeah. it's oh, different. Yeah. I, look, know, I, it, I, I, look, I like Idris Elba a lot. Mm. Um, I think that would have made more sense. Yeah, but it's like they, they kind of wrote themselves in a box where they've already done the the female Bond. Who happens to be black? 
So I think if they do it again, it's like... Yeah. But, uh, like, I mean, the, the difference is that she's not actually called James Bond. She's just a female double O agent. I know, and, I like, know. But uh, what I wanted to... You know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, look, I'm not even a fan of the series. I don't... I, honestly, I don't care. But what I'm saying is I understand why mm. they're not rushing it because people lost their minds over that already. And they're like, even though Age is Alba... Yeah. Well, actually, if you want to watch him as James but, Bond... Uh, there's already want, a groundswell behind him. Well, here's the thing. If you want to... You know? It's already happened. If you want to see him play James Bond or in this kind of role, watch uh, Sean Hobbs. That's what he is, basically. Mm. It's deadly. Yeah. That's a great movie. Well, no, it's not yeah. a great movie. It's not a great oh, movie. Oh, that's the, the, fast, the fast, and Fur- fast and Furious. Um, yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. The, the Fast and Furious film, yeah. yeah. It, it's, not, yeah it's, not, like I mean, but... it's not a great movie. It's a fantastic movie, and you should totally see it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like it's just it's one of those things. I would love to see him. I w- always thought that like he, because he would. I thought he would. Like I think he would bring like again. It's kind of like with the way Craig brought something different to Bond. And I think now, I mean, for God's sake, like the first Bond film came out in the '60s, so we're 60 years into this thing. Like I would much rather see them do something completely different with Bond at this point than just give us more of the like I think keep going, to, going even like, more of the same thing percent even like uh breaking out the percentages there like we're mm. 14 years out of that 60 year thing with this same just gritty tone and mm. <laughs> yeah i need like, something <laughs> yeah i mean like at least i mean like at least with the um like at least with uh there was like that there was that 50 year run where they were kind of just campy fun spy stories and then they just really went overly serious in it went like with the I like the amount of the amount of these Craig films have had this thing of like the importance of old world spies as the story is ridiculous. You know? And like it's just it's it's something where like I think I do think there needs to be a level of a there needs to be a change to it because like you know I mean at some at some point there needs to just be going like yeah but these films are supposed to be like fun. Fun, <laughs> like you know, it's it's that in, sort of like tonal. Uh, it's it's that sort of kind of tonal sentiment where you cannot have something this deadpan serious for this long yeah. without just boring people. Yeah. Somebody needs to crack a joke to alleviate all just tension. You know, like I mean, there's something I, th- I think as well. It's because like. You know, when you look at like America, American spy uh, films, they're pretty, pretty painful to watch by comparison, because they tend to they tend to either be even somehow even more serious than the James Bond films are, or they tend to be so campy and ludicrous that they just like have no internal logic to them, and. You know, I've always felt like the James Bond films like operate in this nice little middle ground where the story itself is like a nice, simple story where it's just someone who has like a ridiculous, like it's ne- it, like it nearly plays like a nineteen minute nineteen uh, sixties Batman episode. You know, Cl- actually, like- do you know what it was that actually checked me out from Bond just immediately? Mm. Like, aside from the fact the film's kind of cop- crap, uh, back yeah, back a couple of years ago. Watched Man from Uncle. Yeah. That, that remake, like obviously it's a 60s TV series, but that remake, I watched that I was like, oh, this is, this is what a Bond movie should be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like when uh, I had a similar thing with watching uh, the A Team uh, remake. And I was like, oh, this is everything the Expendables promised to be. You know? <laughs> like, <laughs> and, like, you don't realize how bad something is until you see someone else. Apropos yeah. of nothing, just do it good. <laughs> yeah, it's like a canary in the coal mine, like <laughs> moment where you just go it's, like, it's, oh it's, yeah. <laughs> it's like the outer worlds and Fallout. Yeah. Well, except we knew Fallout was already bad, but here's someone doing it good. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Like it's the same kind of thing, and like, yeah, I mean, it's just one of those. It's just one of those instances where I do think it would be really, really cool to. Um, it would, like I would really love to see them do something different with, with uh, Hardy, but I just don't see it happening, unfortunately. Yeah, no, I, I, I think this is a transitional thing. Um, yeah. Like I think they'll do one or two moves with Hardy, and then they'll bring in Ages Elba. That's what's yeah. going to happen. So probably. It, it's, yeah. I, I, I think they just want to 
they want to give kind of like a because from my understanding of Bond, they always have those kind of cool downs where they bring mm. in someone just to kind of be like, right, let's get serious. It's kind of what they did with Val Kilmer with Batman, where they kind mm. of forget that everyone forgets Val Kilmer was really good. Mm. And Hardy could be great, but I think the, whoever's after him will really start carrying the series. And it probably will be Age oh, but... man. Tom mm. Hardy deserves better than to be a Timothy Dalton. <laughs> 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 well, yeah, he is bigger. He's bigger than that. He doesn't need to be there. He's probably just there because he wants to do it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I like it. And on top of that, they they are just looking for any excuse to just oust Craig from this. He does. Yeah. He has not wanted to do this for long. For like the two for two or three movies at this point. Yeah, he honestly, wants it out. Honestly, when I, when I see him in that ad every time, I'm like, who hurt you? Daniel That's Craig. also the other thing, you know. At this who point, they're you? not good movies. But you, he's checked it. Like, yeah, completely. He, like, he just doesn't care. Like, it's just... mm. And it, the worst thing about it is, they were, like, in my opinion, they were never good movies to begin with. So I'm like, okay. Well, like, I have no attachment. They probably are good movies, but I have no attachment to them. So that's, that's where mm. I was coming from. But what I mean, like, it's just like, okay, there were some cool ideas, but I straight up walked out of Skyfall. No, I fell asleep first and then walked out of it. I was like, this is bad. Casino Royale was good, though. The, the amount of movies where you say they're bad when you've fallen asleep through them is staggering, by the way. Oh, uh, <laughs> we, we, hold on, that's only ha- oh, there's only one movie that that happened during, and that was Captain Marvel, because I was on a 14-hour flight from San Francisco the day, the day before. So that's the only reason why. I've never fallen asleep under any other movie, though. Yeah, I'd still say that like that, like falling asleep during a film is not how you can mar- uh, how you can judge quality from it if you haven't seen all of it. I think it's judged that your sleep pattern's terrible. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fair, fair, fair. You know, but it was, um, I don't know. I just I never got anything. I, like I like I like Casino Royale. Yeah, Quite like what, what I would say for Skyfall that made that put it over the top of every other Bond film was that it was the first Bond film after like fifty years that had actual backstory for Bond which right. I found very interesting um, I, I thought the villain I thought the first half of it was excellent and then it just kind of descended into into kind of just like uh, running through the motions if that makes sense do you not find them terribly slow oh yeah no, the first half I don't first half I think I thought like really zipped well, by no I mean like Bond movies in general like they're terribly slow and oh yeah. yeah 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 and, and they're, they're just very like, again with the Craig ones particularly they're very long yeah, and yeah. I, I think I know that's kind of the, a problem with the, the, with the big the, blockbuster movies at the moment that they're right two and a half hours the Bond movies are so long yeah, <laughs> yeah. far but, longer like, than they Bond really movies. have to be yeah Bond movies are typically supposed to be 90 minutes because mm. they're pep they're 90 minutes of pep that's what they're supposed to <clears throat> like as I said, like they're supposed to be basically like, uh, you know, like I I love the Connery ones because they're basically just like a bigger budget 1960s Batman film, you know, and I love them in, in that form. They're I, ninety. They're ninety minute Aston Martin uh, dads. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And what's wrong with that? <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, um, like. I, I think that like it, it's just one of those things that they've just kind of it, it's just one of those things where like I, I want to see what they're going to do but yeah. I'm not I, sure I look, if it's going to go anywhere yeah like as I said you know we, we'll wait on we'll wait and see what happens like it's we still have to see this other one that's coming out that they've been threatening for months so <laughs> when that goes we'll be like right yeah. let's see what, we'll, what the next one is we'll see what happens after COVID when it comes out <laughs> Yeah, but that, yeah. you know, I, I, I don't know, man. Like, uh, speaking of which, actually, so not only that's been pushed back, but now all the Marvel movies have been pushed back. Mm-hmm. So, so far, Wonder Woman is still slated. So it looks like DC are just going to go for it. But um, Tenant, people should have seen more Tenant. Tenant is great. Um, you know, oh. fun, funnily enough, I was actually, because, the, like, the, the, the cinema in Deliri is notoriously quiet most times mm, right. and very quiet during like COVID and right. was open and I was very much considering actually just going out and seeing Tenet knowing I'd be one of three people in that theatre the week before we locked in I was like ah oh, damn it yep I was, gonna, I was planning to see I was planning to see Tenet as well and then locked in so what I would say guys right I've been to the cinema like six or seven times it's mm. fine no, I'm it's in, like the cinema by me is closed Oh, like, there's a lockdown. So, well, now, well, 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 no, well, now, I mean, like, the, the, all the cinemas close to me are closed as well. Even though mm. I, I don't live in Dublin, 
I basically do. So mm. it's like, yeah, it's close. Well, but I yeah. mean, like when stuff reopened, I just uh, went to the cinema loads and it was me and three other people. Mm. I'm like, look, it's fine. You know, at, at this point, it's like, I'd say if you're not going to the cinema, unless you have an underlying condition, um, you're fine. <laughs> you know, no mm. one's going, no one's going. And it's sad because... This is, this is not a mass call to go to the cinema because that's going to that's gonna cause the problem. Yeah. No, it's is, not. It's not. But here's yeah. the thing. What I will have to say, walk, here's the credits is due, right? Uh, I'll just use Cine World as an example. They have a limited booking, right? They space everything out and they only have a limited number of people there. So they do it really, really well. And all the social distance is there to clean everything super well. So it's like, it's not a mass call to go to the cinema, but people shouldn't be afraid either because it's not like they don't care. You know what I mean? They're, they're really doing a great job. Uh, Odeon did a great job as well. Um, so yeah, from what I've seen, cinemas are doing really well. You know, to be fair, the way I see it is it's more, it's a similar risk as taking a bus, I suppose. You know, which... Mm. I've seen some scary stuff on buses, guys. Mm. <laughs> I really am. So I'm more scared about getting the bus than going to the cinema, to be honest with you. Um, That's fair. <laughs> yeah. The buses are wild west. So in Dublin lockdown again, I'm like, of course it is. Because yeah. <laughs> it's, like, it's wild. Um, but yeah. So uh, look, the thing about it is, I don't know when cinema's going to open up again. But what I would do is, if well, Marvel should just put these movies up on Disney, Plus, because you know why are you waiting for like yeah you know Mulan obviously did it so people want stuff to watch they would easily sell out their well, even if they want to put a premium on them which they shouldn't do because it's anti-consumerist um, they should just you know release Black Panther and um, not Black Panther Black, uh, Black, Black Widow. Widow Black Widow sorry uh, Black Widow and the other one is what's the other one release? that's that's the one that just baffles me it's like Forgetting about the movies, whatever plan they have for them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why yeah. they've been hoarding the TV series? That's another thing that's weird. This. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. Like, that's a oh, weird thing too. Actually, yeah. That only just came out this week. Is that they released just a, another trailer for WandaVision, WandaVision. Yeah. with no release date. No, just says nothing. coming soon. Yeah. and I'm like, you guys are sitting on a gold mine. Yeah, you are mm. hemorrhaging right now without this. Like you've you got know? okay. Yeah. What the only thing they have coming up is Mandalorian season two at the end of October. Yeah. So with no fate, with no stable release date to when one division's coming out, no. you have nothing else. But here's the thing, right? So they weren't. So they're sitting on that. They're sitting on uh, Black Widow. They haven't finished. Um, they haven't finished the other one, which name I can't remember now. Loki. It's gone. No, it's Loki. I think Loki's finished as well. Yeah, and they haven't finished mm. Um, mm. the Captain America spinoff. The Falcon oh, and uh, Falcon. Yeah. Soldier. They haven't finished that yet. The Mandalorian. They finished. They're they're in season three at the moment, and there's talk of um, Patrice mm. Pascal leaving, which is weird because how do you do the Mandalorian without the main character? Um, so I'm just like I don't know why they're just stuck on here. Let's just release this. Even do a premium where you do, uh, what, five euro extra to get these shows before everyone else. Again, well, no, like, not... the whole point of this is that like this is their exclusive content. Yeah. And what... this is the time to release it. I but just I... don't understand. But what I mean is if they, re if they really wanted to, they could do that and people would still pay for it. As yeah. we have seen, there's a precedent set for it. But now it's just like, I just don't understand it. You have a captive audience no one else can do anything it's else. A, it's a literal captive audience. Yeah, as well. literally. It, it's uh, during the time when people are bummed out anyway. So why not just go for it? Why not just release this kind of stuff and do something? And again, Disney are having their money because their parks aren't open and mm. they're an entertainment company with no place to put it. And they have the streaming service and they're just not doing it. WWE are even doing a better job of finding content and WWE suck at everything. <laughs> yeah. So it's just like, you know. <laughs> No, no, seriously, they do. Though. Seriously, oh, I've, heard, I've heard some of the they're, horror stories coming out of them recently. They are oh, the man. worst at everything, and like, they're. I beaten. have no connection to wrestling, and I've heard some of the nonsense they've been pulling. Like, yeah. Oh man. Yeah. No, oh, man. That, not, that, not even going there. No, um, it's a whole, it's whole shit show in and of itself. But what I mean is, when your baseline is that, yeah, and you're still not able to meet that, yeah, it's like, like wow, what's of the th of the three branches of Disney, Star Wars has one show. Marvel has a show planned. I don't think Disney has anything coming no. out. No. no. 
No. Like, they've got a couple of things planned for next year, but that's mm. it. And that's if they even get released next year. The only notable release Disney has coming up is that Onward is finally coming to Europe after having three months on Disney+. Plus. And oh that movie God. bombed. Yeah. Like, that's all Disney has. So yeah. I, they, it just seems like they are baffling, making baffling decisions. Yeah. They're, they're just really upset that Artemis Fowl didn't got bad reviews. <laughs> Oof. Yeah. You know, that, that's what it all comes down to, guys. We just should have liked Artemis Fowl, even though it was terrible. We should have we should have been serfs in the Disney pantheon. Yeah, you know, we should have said thank you, Disney. I really liked Artemis Fowl, and yes, maybe things would be better. Yeah, <laughs> do a bit of a curtsy, you know. <laughs> like, I mean, by the way, have you guys seen Artemis Fowl? No, no. Oh, it's terrible. I, <laughs> I, 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 I hated I hated the book, so I assumed I'd hate the film. Yeah, no, um, but I, like I I didn't read the books, but I saw. I saw a review of it and then I had yeah. to go and he hates it and I railed it. And then I actually sat down and watched it. I'm like, oh my God, this is even worse than the review. There's yeah. not a single redeeming quality in this entire I've, movie. I know it was a very troubled production for a litany of reasons, which doesn't, you know, but still, I mean, like it, like I, it was like, as far as I'm concerned, speaking as someone who didn't like the book, um, it wasn't starting with a winning formula to begin with, and yeah. it, seems you know, like, it seems like a Harry Potter for you know a Harry Potter written yeah. a failure where the material itself is just yeah. atrocious. Like I, 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 I absolutely despise Owen Colfer and everything he's written. I, um, and one thing I will have to say though, I will have to stand up for one thing because mm. if you go on Amazon Prime at the moment. You can yeah. see a movie that I'm in called Poison Pen that was written by Owen Colfer. And I have a speaking mm. role. So, and that movie isn't terrible. I'm not just saying it because I'm in it. I was surprised how, that it was actually decent. You were so, in something that you actually thought was okay. Well, there you go. You know, yeah. from being on Fair City for so long, Bryn, you know this. Yeah. Like, yeah. you're surprised Absolutely. when it comes off as good. You're like, oh, well, okay, that was all yeah. right. You know? Impressive. Yeah, impressive. <laughs> <laughs> like, but that, I mean, that's the thing, though. Like, I mean, uh, but again, like I mean, there was like they had like directors change hands like once or twice. The studio interference because, of course, there was studio interference, and then like there was also like delays in the production finishing and all that kind of stuff as well. Outside of like um, outside of like the runner, the the uh, the decision makers on the film uh, being switched around, like. It sound, I mean, like everything that came out about it made, made it sound like something you were like, this, anytime you see, you hear about these things, you go, like almost every time you hear about these sort of things, it turns out to be a bit of a train wreck. Like it's very rare that it's not, you know? I think it's like something like with that many things changing hands, it's nearly better just to start the project from scratch. And, yeah, but no absolutely. one's going to do that because that, that would just average money. It, it, it's the sunk cost fallacy at that point. Yeah, that's the problem. Absolutely, absolutely. Like that's the thing. If it, you know, it's that's why. That's what I fear that they think um, Disney Plus is now a dumping ground for stuff that's failed, and rather than what it should be, where it's like, okay, we have to get this content out for people during the yeah. pandemic. Well, well look, this. Talk, if they're worried about being a dumping ground for bad quality, talk to Netflix about uh, the films they've produced. Oh, dude, stop! Netflix is atrocious. <laughs> it's like, it's I'm so sorry, I'm, I'm, bad. I'm, it's like, so for, bad. For every decent film that Netflix Netflix has produced, <laughs> there's just a oh, swan. It's like they they have managed to make bloatware of media. Just <laughs> just Netflix can put up a chart saying, "Yeah, we released 700 movies this yeah. year." That like I, I mean, those the same movie. <laughs> yeah, like I mean, even like they're I mean, you, like bloatware even would, is how I, it was a perfect way to describe how they uh, they make uh, their own in-house TV shows tell their stories. So, like, you know, um, oh, I mean, Netflix and... Uh, Netflix, I don't think I've gone off of, like, self-made content faster than I have on Netflix. Because, like, damn, it's bad. I just can't stand Netflix in general. Like, I was I actually I was re-watching Bandersnatch the other day, and I liked it initially. But it's just very annoying and yep. convoluted. It was it was a really cool experience. The it first was time. the first time, and then you go back and watch it now, about a year and a half out, 
Yeah. And I'm like, this is really convoluted and not fun. I, but I, I don't even, I mean, t- to be honest with you, there isn't any of the, like any of the Black Mirrors that Netflix produced that I actually like in the scheme That's of things. That's I actually, fair, like, yeah. I'd much prefer the Channel 4 run. Yeah, me too. Me too. Um, you know, I think like, there's interesting ideas, but that's as far as you get. Like, one well, of the it, 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 it went away from being this social commentary thing with cool ideas to being, uh, uh, the, what's a depression porn? Yep. Oh yeah, yeah. Really did go down that rabbit hole. Yeah. Like one of the things that um that like I've been I've been falling down this rabbit hole. I don't know if either of you have watched uh, Community. Yeah, love or, Community. Yeah. So like, uh, have you seen the episode Meow Meow Beans? Yeah. Oh yeah. So I've been I've been going back watching that again recently because I just I don't know what happened, but I just got found, I just found myself needing to go. Ha! You've only got one beans. What a loser! Um, <laughs> um, which like cause I saw that like loser. random. I saw that on Reddit randomly, and then it's just been my head to watch it, and like. I saw clips of it on YouTube and just saw people in the comments going, oh yeah, this is so much better than the Black Mirror episode. <laughs> <laughs> That's, okay, so this is what yeah. we're saying. We need to get Don Harmon to start writing Black Mirror. Yeah, absolutely. Not a whole, terrible idea, though. I would wholeheartedly endorse <laughs> that idea. I think Dan Harmon and Charlie Brooker would be a brilliant pairing. I don't, I don't know, man. Like, Dan Harmon, uh, it's... Love community, Rick and Morty, yeah. not so much. So you know like, what? I I got I kind of got an all and all thing because when I watched, when I actually sit down and watch Rick and Morty, I'm like, this is a perfectly enjoyable TV yeah. series. Yeah. It is fine. I watch it, I enjoy it. Yeah. But then you go into the greater world, you're like, oh, oh yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> I don't the problem. Want to hear about this That's anymore? Yeah. You're like, I hate this show, but I don't. And then I watch it. I'm like, I really like this yeah. show. And it's like, shut, shut up. <laughs> it's yeah. just I'm, like, you know, I'm, just I'm, stop talking about. It. The thing that the thing with like I like I I had I went through the like I started watching Rick and Morty at episode five in season one, mm. and you know like I've been there for the full experience of seeing it become a popular show and then having to endure the copy pasta of you know you have to be a very intelligent person and all that jazz, and like it, it I mean like again like the way I would put it is it's like like those fans ruined rick and morty the same way that tool fans ruined li- liking tool you know yeah. and like and as well as like, the one thing like if i ever see people talk about rick and morty they're going oh it's the best show ever made they go like their best episode was the second episode of season one and they have never topped it and then i just walk away <laughs> because as far as i'm concerned la maradog is the best episode they've ever made and it'll probably be the best episode they ever make uh, so yeah. damn good. I think my funniest memory with Rick and Morty is when they first released the uh, the original pilot, and oh, all yeah. I heard was my friend being like, "Hey, Dan Harmon's got a new thing out. It's basically faulty Back to the Future." I'm like, "This is." It. Yeah. yeah, I think it's a show that it hit the Simpsons button far too quick. Oh yeah, as in like we've been mapping the slow, the, the rise and rise and rise and rise and rise. And we're like a couple episodes away from the start of the fall. Mm. And that happened. In Once they made the seven year deal. Once they made the seven year deal. Yeah, absolutely. Just, absolutely. Know. I think of it is though, it, the fall happened and then it became the biggest show in the world. Yep. And you're like, oh my God, this is so annoying. It's not even that good anymore. What are you talking about? Like it's, but I mean, it peaked, it peaked after season two. I love. I actually really like season two, and I agree with you. I think um, the second episode is still like the absolute peak of the show. Um, that that scene where yeah. Snuffles talks to Summer in yeah. uh, in her bedroom is yeah. the best scene ever committed to television. It's brilliant. But like it's just oh man. Like I mean, it, it's such a frustrating show because of the fan base. <laughs> like yeah. you know, and I like it's one of those things where. Um, especially because of recent lights, I like uh, there's been a sentiment that's gone that's gone around that I fully agree with, which is that I would happily sacrifice the six seasons left in Rick and Morty's uh, deal to get one more season of Edge Brothers because out of the two shows, that's the one I need a season of more. Mm. Yeah, like you know, if, just, I, ne- I, if, if I never cut cut off Rick and Morty entirely, give me a Metal Apocalypse finale. Yep. 
I mean, hell, yeah, you could, you could uh, yes, more Kev. money. Yes, like, Kev, that's you, you, it. Yeah. You, could, you could give us, you could take away two seasons of Rick and Morty and give us Metal Apocalypse and give us, and give us Adventure Brothers and then just appease two fan bases that need to be appeased. <laughs> like, Let's see, guys. We obviously, come on, Adam Swim. Be but sound. But we're obviously not intelligent enough to understand Rick and Morty. No, I've got big dumb man brain that only likes having a musical. Yeah. But there we go. That's why. But they but, wrote um, an opera. Yeah. It's like, you know, and it's spectacular. It, 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 it's like, amazing. Yeah, it's so without great. without Venture Brothers, Rick and Morty would never have existed. But okay, <laughs> sure. Yeah, yeah, I'll totally accept that. Um, I don't know. I I was just you know it's this is the problem about you know network. You think in this age of networks, uh, sorry, out of networks where it's like Netflix and Amazon yeah. and all that kind of stuff, shows still get cancelled. It's like. Dark yeah. Crystal got cancelled by Netflix, but yeah. Cutie still exists. It's like, what are you talking yeah. about? Yeah. Dark Crystal's incredible. Yeah. Come on, guys. Yeah. Come oh, on. it's like this the, the streaming platforms are just slowly morphing their way back into, back into all the cable yeah. products. But, uh, yeah, you know, that's what's happening very slowly. It's really annoying. Yeah. The same thing's gonna like I mean, the same thing's gonna pre- like was pre- is predicted to happen as well to uh, stuff like YouTube, where eventually it'll just become just all pre-owned TV. TV. Yeah. We can't yeah. escape it. And on that until, theory, like, it, it, it's, it's not until like, you know, another, just the user fi- the user base for YouTube eventually jumps to another platform. Yeah. If no, YouTube yeah. becomes too streamy. Yeah, but here's kind. the thing. Once, once um, in, a, in a real world, this is how piracy becomes a thing again, which we're starting to see. Mm. But on that social media thing, you know, this is a new platform is there. Like Vimeo is still a thing. Yeah. Um, well, Vimeo is terrible. So it is terrible. Bitchu is a thing, also terrible. Yeah. So it just is what it is. You know, we just have to wait for one of those platforms to get good again. So yeah. But I mean, yeah. you see, again, I mean, like we're we're also looking at we're also at a point in time where we we might be looking at uh, Facebook pulling and uh, pull it, making a bluff that it can't fuck it, that it can't actually like get behind because they're saying no because facebook are saying to the eu no we're not going to bow down to you regulators and the regulators are going okay we'll then leave (laughs) facebook's like fine we will like and they're going okay fine do see how see how that works out for you facebook like yeah well we will keep an eye on that and on that note, yeah. guys, we have to wrap it up. We didn't get to The Simpsons because, of course, we didn't because we no. made a show plan and we never get to ending on a show no. plan. But we didn't get hey, there. It was, the, it was the last. It was the we had. We were so close. We just had to get through that and one other item. Yeah. <laughs> well, look. Despite Manute's best efforts, we made it. Yeah. So Dara still lives. Yeah. Next time, Manute. <laughs> next time. Next time, gadget. Next time. <laughs> um, and my dog has left now, so I can't even like pet him while I say that. Um. Anyway, guys, uh, we have a lot of content coming up this week. Uh, Katie has a new show dropping tomorrow. Uh, your show is dropping tomorrow, Bryn. Yeah, this show is dropping tomorrow. Of course, by tomorrow I mean Thursday. For anyone who's checking us out on Phoenix Two Point Five M, and Kev, you have a show this oh Friday God. recording. Not yes. tomorrow. Not uh, tomorrow. Well, yeah, we are recording this month's episode of Anime Crash Course now this week, uh, set to release the first of October. Yeah, that's what was brought. Uh, yeah, Very first of cool. October, we're going to be pulling a Halloween spooky special. We will be covering uh, the cult classic Helsing Ultimate. Very exciting, and I will be there and for Darryl real this will time. Be there this time. For real this time. <laughs> for realsies. <laughs> <laughs> Unless Manu's get him. Unless Manu get me and mess with my computer again. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, it, it's cool because I actually have like time off to do it, and I'll be around. So I'm, and I love Helsing. So I'm like super excited to see it. It's like it, it great. And I was talking about this more during the show. Uh, a, a great double feature is watching Trinity Blood and Helsing. That's a great time. And I'm, I'm going to leave that hanging because I'll pick it up on Friday. Nice. <laughs> but good. Exactly. But guys, we'll be back at, oh, it's your week. There's no no Game Corner this week. Um, that'll be back next week. No Straight Out Canto Dicks this week. That'll be back next week. We are doing a different schedule on the Rewind. Keep an eye on the social media for when that's uh, going to happen. But guys, thank you very much for joining us. We'll be back same time here at Phoenix 92.5 FM, YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, all that good stuff. 
This has been Nerd to No Basis, Nerd to No Media. Bye, guys. Bye. Hey. Check out the rest and rewind here on Phoenix 92.5 FM every Tuesday at 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. And of course, over on nerdtonomedia.com, the only wrestling podcast by wrestling fans who don't hate wrestling. We'll see you then. <laughs>